Dinner's on us. First Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12, only one verse that we will read. Paul tells Timothy, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me. Everybody say enabled. He's enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Father, we thank you. We love you. Do with this moment only what you can do. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give me 30, give me 25 minutes on that timer. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes his first letter to a young pastor. Timothy was an upcoming pastor. He was Paul's protege. Paul was developing him. Paul was working with him, teaching him the rope, showing him the ins and outs of ministry. Paul, in chapter 1, says something to Timothy that seems like it didn't make sense. He had just had a short dialogue with Timothy about the law, helping him to understand that the law can't save. He's, he's re, readjusting some of, some of Timothy's thinking. And then he says in verse number 12, he says, and I thank Christ. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who enables me, counted me faithful. He put me into ministry. What Paul pauses in the midst of his dialogue to young Timothy to say to him is what I want to use as my title for this short message today. Paul simply tells Timothy, God did it. God did it. Will you do me a favor? Will you tell somebody on your road? If that's true for you, just tell them God did it. God, God did it. God did it. If somebody asks you, somebody asks you, man, how did you get to where you are? Man, God did it. Man, how is your marriage able to stay together after all you guys have been through? Man, God did it. How were you able to go through the things that you've gone through in your life and you did not lose your mind? God did it. How were you able to get laid off, laid off and still pay all your bills? God did it. Paul, early in this letter to young Timothy, stops and says to him, I want you to know that all the things that I'm about to share with you, that this, these things did not come from me. I want you to know that God did it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've been here five years, and, and people are wondering, how did, how did a church plant? We planted right before COVID. Right after we planted, COVID hits. We make it through COVID. We come out of COVID. The church continues to grow. And all that we can truly say yes, yeah. is God did it. He's telling, he's telling young Timothy, he says, God did it. Glory to God. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to take a few moments in this anniversary day, and I want to celebrate all of you who have, who have stuck and stayed with church on purpose through these five years. You've been rocking with us for a long time. Some of you have been with us since our conception. Since we started, since we opened the doors, you've been rocking with us. Some of you jumped in a little bit later on, which is okay. We thank God for you. But I'm so thankful that not only did you stick, but you stayed. And I want you to know that God did it. Paul tells Timothy three things. I'll share these three things with you. Paul tells Timothy, he says, number one, God enabled you. Glory to God. You got to know that it was a supernatural enablement. Let me share it with like you this. Our praise and worship team, they have been singing in front of you five years straight. Every Sunday, standing before you, singing for you five years straight. Our parking team has been out there in the parking lot. Sun, sleet, 
shine, snow, rain. For five years, they've been out there directing traffic, parking cars, and some of y'all are hard-headed. Some of you are real hard-headed. Some of you want to park where you want to park. We have a parking team for a reason. You're not that handicapped. You walk around the mall all day. Somebody ought to say amen to me. Y'all know I'm not scared of you. You only handicap when you want to come to church. And you put that handicap flag on your, on your rearview mirror. You did it coming down the street. Somebody ought to say amen. And you expect the, the parking team to give you special privileges. You running around the church. We looking at you. You going to lose your benefits because we are live on TV. <laughs> if you legit, you legit. If you legit, just don't quit. But God has to enable them to be out there for five years trying to get you part, trying to make you back up a little bit. you like you forget how to do. You know you was over that line. They have to run to your car and say, pull up a little bit. Can you pull over? And you get mad because they actually, it takes, it takes a divine enablement for them to be able to do that. Five years, our praise and worship team sings before the Lord and try to usher you into the presence of the Lord. Some of y'all are like my boy Jasper. Jasper Taylor, that's my guy. Jasper is faithful. He's going to be in church every Sunday. But Jasper is like bro man from the fifth floor. Jasper going to sit in church just like this. Praise and worship going off. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Jasper like this. He going to be here. He going, he going, he going, he sits in the same chair. He going to be there. He's faithful. But you need to know that the praise and worship team as they are singing and worshiping, it sure makes them feel a little bit better when you stand up and when you get, when you praise God, don't praise God for them, but praise God with them. It takes a supernatural enablement for them to get up every Sunday, sing before the Lord, pull on the presence of God. Paul said, I want you to understand that it is God who enables me. It is God who gives me the ability to do this, enable. What does it mean? To give someone the power, authority, or means to do something. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 says, it is God who enables us. There it is. It's God who enables us, along with you, to stand firm for Christ. He has anointed us. There's an anointing when it comes to ministry. If you're in ministry and you're not anointed, you're going you're gonna to burn out faster sooner than you started. It takes an anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing means that you've been set apart. You've been set aside by God. You've been given a supernatural empowerment to fulfill God's will on this earth. Thank God for our ushers. Our ushers have been serving y'all five years strong, baby. Five like the Energizer Bunny. They keep going and going and going. And some of y'all are mean. You might as well say amen. I'll have them point you out. Don't sit in here and act like I'm not telling the truth. I watch the ushers. They try to get y'all the best seat in the house. They go get y'all from the door. They're walking with y'all. They walk all the way to the front. 
they look around and you disappear. <laughs> you and ducked off back there in the back row somewhere. Yeah. They're trying to get you the best seat in the house. They're trying to get you close to the fire. Because you do know that uh, the closer you get to the front, the fewer distractions you have. The Bible says when you come into the house, Lord, draw near so that you can hear. Glory to God. And they have to deal with that. They got to they gotta deal with all the gum paper that y'all leave. <laughs> all them peppermints y'all stole. Y'all eat the peppermint, leave the wrapper. They got to deal with that. They got to deal with that. Yeah, they got to walk around and y'all leave Kleenex and everything. You, you, so, so listen, what I'm saying is it's a, it has to be something supernatural that's happening that allows them to get up every Sunday and come back every Sunday doing the same thing over and over. And Paul is telling Timothy, it is supernatural. What's happening in this church is supernatural. I need you to recognize and realize that what is happening is supernatural. It was supernatural the way Corey was on that lead guitar this morning. That was supernatural. That was supernatural. The Spirit of God moved upon him. He was playing under the anointing. It's called a Zamar praise. It's when, it's when you praise God with the instruments. Glory to God. He was under the anointing. As he was playing, you could feel the anointing in the room. There's something supernatural happening here. There's the, the average church in East Texas is on the decline. The average, not all churches, but the average church is on the decline. But we thank God that people continue to join this ministry. That ours is steady growing and on the incline. Why? It's not because we've been so good. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. He's telling Timothy, there's a, some, something supernatural that's happening. That's why we praise God the way we do. We praise God because we realize something supernatural is happening. Where's Dre at? Stand up, Dre. Where Dre is? Dre in here. Dre in here. He's out. Dre. Dre was Dre been in a coma. Uh, his uh, mom was texting saying he was unresponsive, that we don't know, the doctors don't know. Dre walked in here was in service with us today. I'm just telling you, there he is, y'all, there he is, back in service. Super natural. I need you to know that we're not just celebrating a number. We're celebrating a God who has given us a supernatural enablement. A power to be here doing the things that we're doing, doing the ministry that we're doing. Watch this. Look at your neighbor and say, say God has blessed us five years and we don't owe anybody anything. Come on, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all not excited enough for me, y'all. Y'all not excited because, let me say it like this, the blessing that's on this house has got to manifest in your house. Y'all better talk back to me. Come on, man. It is supernatural what God is doing here. It's supernatural. Paul, Paul said that God enabled me. Watch this. Not only did he say that God enables us, but watch this. I like this next part. Number two, he says that God counted you faithful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo! Yes, sir. God counted. One of you ushers, run me one of them clickers up here. Hurry up. Run me one of them clickers up here. God counted you faithful. Yes, sir. God counted you faithful. Listen, I think Paul said, he said, God enabled me, and God counted me faithful. Y'all, this is a little thumb, little thumb counter that we use to keep count of where we at in our services, how many people we have, and our ushers do a count. And so what they do is they go through, and they, they count all the rows, and they look at you, and they count. Here's what I believe God does. I believe God looks at us. I believe God looks at you and say, faithful, 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 
faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful, faithful. Watch this. Watch this. It's not because of you that you've done everything right. But when God looks at you, he don't see you. God looks at you and sees himself. So when God looks at you and sees himself, God says faithful, 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 faithful. You ought to thank God that God has counted you faithful. Give God some glory. Paul said, Paul said, God counted, counted me faithful. I believe when God takes a survey of the churches in this area, I don't know what number we are, but I believe at some point God looked at church on purpose and said, said faithful. How do I believe that? Because the favor of God and the supernatural empowerment of God is still on this ministry. I believe God has counted us faithful. That's why we celebrate this evening. We celebrate because God has counted us faithful. God's counted you faithful. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 says, and this is from God who reconciled us unto himself through Christ. No, 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 I'm sorry. Um, are faithful to remain loyal or steadfast. Matthew 25, 21 says, his master replied, listen to this, y'all better get this, well done, good. Y'all better, whoo, that is so good. Well done, good. And faithful servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Tell your neighbor, God's, God's about to put you in charge. Come on, tell him, God. That's why you get raises the way you do. That's why you got promotion that you are looking for. Because God said you've been faithful over a few things. I'm about to put you in charge over much. That's why it's important to be faithful. If you're going to join a church, be faithful to it. If you're going to say, I'm a member of a church, don't say I'm a member of a church and not be faithful to it. Learn how to be faithful because faithfulness pays off because God is looking for ones who are faithful. Don't you join a church and not be faithful. You be faithful to your ministry. You be faithful to it. Wherever you go, you be faithful. Paul said, God counted me faithful. Thank God for faithful members. Thank God for members I don't have to look for and wonder where you're at and wonder if you're going to be here or not. Thank God for faithful for members who are accountable, who are accountable to their leadership. And they, you let us know where you're at. Let us know that you're not going to be here. Because believe it or not, when you're missing, we miss you. Let me say that again. When you're missing, we miss you. Glory to God. Be faithful to your ministry. Listen to this. Stay with me. The Lord rewards, 1 Samuel 26, the Lord rewards everyone. For their righteousness and faithfulness. Some of the blessing that you get is not because you've been so good. You're just faithful. My God. My God. My God. Glory to God. I told you about Jasper. Jasper's faithful. He's going to be here. His family's going to be here. Thank God for him. Thank God for him that he's faithful. I'm saying to you, many of you are faithful. Many of you that are part of organizations or part of auxiliaries in our church, thank God for your faithfulness. That's what we're celebrating today because God rewards faithfulness. Faithfulness counts to God. Proverbs 28, 20. If you never, this is as plain as we just as plain as I can get it today. Proverbs 28, 20 says, a faithful man will abound with blessings. Faithful man is going to abound with blessings. You, you can't keep a blessing from yourself when you're faithful. Just be faithful to God. Be, stop that sitting at the house saying, you're going to church today. I don't know if I'm going. You be texting people, trying to get a witness. Be faithful. That's your church. Be faithful to your church. Be faithful to the ministry. If you're faithful to God, you should be faithful to your ministry. You faithfully give to your ministry. Faithfully tithe. Faithfully give offering. Faithfully show up and be present. To help wherever it needs to be helped. Yeah. Be faithful. Listen, I used to be a, I used to be a weekend warrior. 
Brother, what a weekend, any, any weekend warriors, anybody else? Do weekend warriors, but weekend warrior, okay? Uh, yeah, that means I was in the National Guard. That's all it means. Now listen, I was so faithful to my ministry. When we, we, was in, we was in Kilgore at Faith Tabernacle, my first church. We was in, well, not my first church, the first church I, that, that I was a member of. And, and we used to drill in Marshall. We had drill in Marshall. And those of you that understand the weekend things, you, you have to drill on Sundays. Well, they would let us out of drill at 11 um, on Sundays for lunch. And we'd have to be back to about 1, 1 15. I would drive all the way from Marshall, all the way to Kilgore. I would show up to church in my military uniform. I would show up to church. I would sit on the front worshiping God. And then right as church was ending, I hated to leave. But I would get up and I would have to drive all the way back to Marshall to make it to formation on time. You know why? Because I wanted to be faithful. It wasn't about being faithful to people. I wanted to be faithful to my responsibility to God. Glory to God. Because, because some of you come to church for what you can get from church. You forget that God has anointed you to bring something with you to give while you get to, to get from you when they get to church. There's something you ought to get and something you ought to give. When you stay away, you can't give what you didn't bring. Glory to God. Somebody needs your ministry. Somebody needs your smile. Somebody needs your handshake. Somebody needs your hug. Somebody in that church needs you. Why? Because God sent you there for a reason. Don't let the Satan, don't let Satan make you feel like you're insignificant, like you don't matter. Yeah, you matter more than you understand. You matter more than you know. Glory to God. You got to understand who you are. You got to know that I come, I come to church to get something and I come to give something. Y'all better help me preach in this house. Glory to God. I'm going to come to church looking for that person I can shake their hand. I'm going to be looking for the visitors. I'm going to be looking for, I'm going to look for that person that's, that, that's walking around, that's going through some things. I need to be there because I don't want to miss the opportunity to minister to the person that God has called me to minister to. Paul said, Paul said, God counted us faithful. And lastly, lastly, he said, God put you into ministry. God put you into ministry. Listen, what happens on this stage is just a tiny part of ministry. This is but a small part of a huge picture. If you are operating in the church, if you operate, if, you, if you're working as an usher, you're in ministry. If you're on the music team, you're in ministry. If you're working in the parking lot, you're in ministry. If you're working on the door, you're in ministry. If you're a greeter or an ambassador, you're in ministry. If you're working in the media team, you're in ministry. If you're walking on the cameras, you're in ministry. And on our safety team, you are in ministry. And God puts you into ministry. Don't let the word ministry scare you. God put you into ministry. Let me, let me, let me prove it to you, then I'm done. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, and this is from God who reconciled you to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry, there it is, of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Play softly. Listen to me carefully. Everything that we do, everything that you do is a part of God reconciling people back to himself. Let me explain it to you. The word reconciliation simply means to take thing, to take two factions that were once at odd with each other and making them be at peace with each other again. When a person is not saved, they are the enemy of the cross. They are enemies of God. There are people that show up on this campus every week that are enemies of God. Hallelujah. So, on their way to this church, they're driving up. Satan's talking to them, saying, you're not going to be able to find a parking spot. You know that church be packed over there. You pull up. They pull up, and the parking team is right there. God bless you. Come on in. Parking space. Oh, man, 
Okay, found a parking spot. They get out the car. Parking team waves at them, greet them. God bless you. Welcome to Purpose. They walk up to the door. I said, when I get to the door, the door's probably going to be locked. They walk up to the door. Door open up by themselves. Two men. Two men standing at the doors like cherubim. Standing there, opening doors for them. They walk in and say, okay, well, the door's open for me. Part of the ministry of reconciliation. They come in and say, the people are going people to be mean. They're not going to speak to us. And they don't get in. They, I know they're not going to be friends. They, they probably stuck up over there. Look at all them nice cars out there. They got to be stuck up. No, we just blessed, baby. They come in the door. Then they're, they're the greeters. Now they hit the hype team first. The hype team, they be out there crunk already. They got music playing, everything. Hype team scare them. They scared. They come in the hype team. They be hype. They come in, the greeters catch them. Good morning. Welcome to Purpose. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to your church. Welcome home. They're coming in. They get in. They're like, oh, my God. They come in. And this church going free peppermints. <laughs> it is yours. It is yours. They come in. They come in and they say, we probably not going to find a place to sit. They come in as the ushers get them. Come on in. Come on, right this way. Oh, I know how to do it now. They walk them in. Give them the best seat in the house. They sit down. Watch this. Then they sit down beside somebody. Who leans over and say, good morning. Welcome to Purpose. We're so glad you're here. And so, so now, now you know what's happening? Everybody that made contact with them is part of the ministry of reconciliation. Making peace with God again. Then they come and they hear the worship team. And they hear the man of worship. Did y'all hear Miss Tasha? Tasha, you better sing, girl. Tasha, Tasha starts singing her own songs. You better sing, Tasha. You better sing. <laughs> Tasha starts singing. People start worshiping. First you're sitting there, you cool. And you say, I don't know the words to this song. Then you look up on the screen like, oh, Lord. <laughs> now look over. First your mouth wasn't moving. Then now you, you know, okay. The Lord is good and it is true. And do it for all generations. Now, now you're singing. Now you're singing. And then you get up and you say, okay, you go through all of that. You go through all that. And then you say, well, let me see what the word's about. And then you come to church and, man, man, we're laughing. Man, we're having fun. We're having a good time. We're meeting people from other countries. And you say, man, maybe this God thing, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe this God thing is not so, not so tough. Because every one of you are a part of the ministry of reconciliation. Helping people make peace with God again. There are people who come in who've been hurt by church. And, and church on purpose is a last-ditch effort for them. But let me tell you something. I'm so thankful for you. Because you make people feel so welcome. You make people feel at home. You make people feel like they belong here. Panola College, they don't know it, but we've, we've already adopted them. They don't realize it. They're part of our family now. They're part of our family. And you make people feel so welcome. Watch this. So then when it comes time for the appeal, the appeal becomes easy. 
Because you made it easy. Because all of you are part of the ministry of reconciliation. Will you give God a round of applause? God bless you. Paul said, God enabled me. He counted me faithful. And God put me into the ministry. God did it. God, God put us in Longview, Texas. God planted us here. God wanted us to be here. And we're here by the grace of God. And this evening at 2 o'clock, we're going to celebrate God's grace.